everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat, and it is time for the final hashtag 50 stack challenge. I am very excited to have a whole stack of 50 guest checks. And for you guys, whatever you're using, I hope you have a whole stack of 50 as well. So um, I only had two little pieces of paper left in the bag, so I just took them out because obviously... <laughs> This is what it's going to be. So anyways, 49 is Ruffle, which I haven't written down on here yet. Number 49 is Ruffle. Normally I draw them out of the bag, but there were the only two to the left. So. And then 50, you need to use a circle or circles, whatever, however you interpret it. So, 49, something ruffle. It can be a paper ruffle. It can be a, a fabric ruffle. It can be, and I know those are actually pleats. I've had people correct me and tell me these aren't ruffles, they're pleats. But in my brain, when I see it, it looks roughly. I call it a ruffle. Okay, so you can use those. That's fine with me. Um, what else? Oh, like if you had lace that is already made into a ruffle, you can use that. Um, or like I said, you can make paper ones and those are super simple. You just take like a strip of paper and then, uh, you know, do this kind of thing. However, however, however you want to do it. And if you want to stitch it, you can, or you can just glue it. So just, you just keep, just keep going and folding until you get a ruffle. So anyhow, and circles, I'm sure you can figure out. And I will be right back. Okay, I am back with the hashtag 50 stack challenge. Different day for me, but same for you. <laughs> so we have ruffle is number 49. So that's what we're going to start working on. Can you guys believe we've done, you know, we're on the last two. How crazy is that? So I'm going to cut the corners. Like now, um, maybe I will finally remember right off the bat to do this because these are the last two. So that sounds right. That sounds just right. So what's going on with you guys? Anything exciting? Not much exciting going on here. This is very, very light. It is the sponge sugar. But I have this or red, so <laughs> we're going with it. I just want that real white pink anyway, so it's fine. Yeah, nothing real exciting going on here, that's for sure. And I have the craziest thing. I have this collage page that I did that I've been using. You guys have seen me use it for one thing or another. Um, but it says ruffle <laughs> right there because it was a piece of um, sewing tissue. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I'm using that. We're going to ink it in the pink as well. Kind of give it a pink tint. Oh, there's a spot I need to fix. I knew I need to fix a couple on this because um, that just happens sometimes if you, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I am not great at like gluing every single edge perfectly. So um, a lot of times when you cut these apart, they, they can fall apart. Which is kind of annoying, but I get it because I never do cover everything just completely. And this glue is going to be a bugger again. I don't know what is up with it, but it's just been giving me fits. No matter how many times I clean it out. Okay, where else did I see? There was some place else where it was loose. Huh, guess not. Okay, so we're going to glue this on here like a pocket. What I'm thinking is I probably need something back here, and I didn't think of that until just now. So let's see what we have. I just want a little something. It's always the way, right? 
I think of it at the last minute. Hold Jesus, on. this is a piece of medieval mirage uh, scrap paper that I have hanging out. That's one thing that's not hard to find is scraps. I just want a little something on the background here. So, And both of the pieces today are going to have pockets. And they're both going to be kind of vintage-y. So that'll be fun. I think I'll just tuck it right up there, like right in the middle. Smack dab. The pink will show up a little more on this. Sorry if you can't see a whole lot of that, but it is it is definitely pink. It's just gonna be for background, so. All right. Yeah, I have a whole bag of scraps from Medieval Mirage <laughs> that I really need to use because they're beautiful. And I'm getting a little bit into the vintage again. I kind of go in cycles, and I think I've mentioned that to you guys. But now, in, um, as soon as I'm done making the Crash to Treasure journal, I'm going to do a um, Sherlock Holmes using the new digital that I just showed you guys. So I'm excited about that. And uh, if you didn't hear or don't know about that, um, I have a new digital called Holmes Carol's Case. And I named it in honor of my beautiful friend Carol. And we're going to do a... Um, Carol Laws, we're going to do a collaboration. So I will make, I already did this, but I want it more. Um, I will make a journal using that kit and she will make a journal using that kit and then we'll swap. So that'll be kind of fun because we'll, we'll get to keep a journal for a change, right? Sometimes that's nice to do. So yeah, I'm excited to do that. I love Carol's work, so I'm always super excited to think I get a piece. She sent me a lovely journal this summer and I feel very blessed to have that. But it'll just be lots of fun anyway. She's the one that uh, asked for the ledger style uh, format and we worked together to figure out what, you know, what she might want for a topic and we talked about all different things and then landed on Sherlock Holmes so I made the kit she took some pictures in her area of some things that I asked her you know if she could do and and so yeah it just went from there and it was a lot of fun working with her on that and having somebody to bounce ideas off of which I don't normally with digitals I just realized I think this is cut wrong but uh, um so it's just really nice to, you know, go, oh, what do you think of this? Or how does this look? Or whatever. It's, it's, it was just nice. I've got this flower I think I'm going to use. And then these little, this little uh, thread and pins. I'll show you closer because you probably can't really tell what the heck it is. There. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. I'm going to actually ink this one in a little bit of brown on the edges so it shows up. And Carol's always so sweet and kind and I love um, the work she does with my digitals. So. It was lovely. All right, let's see. We need I want a little piece of this doily. I like these little flowers. I know I'm getting to the ruffle. I'm getting to the ruffle. <laughs> Everybody's like, uh, hello, you're not doing anything with ruffles. It's like, yeah, I know. You're right, you're right. Just put that just like so. Here. 
it's just like another little layer under there that I feel like I want. But yeah, definitely hop over and see Carol's take on it too. I don't think she hasn't started yet, but I mean, her take on anything really, if you don't watch her her uh, YouTube channel, she's very, very good artist. Oops, I don't really wanna cover that. I like that number there, of course. So it's a beautiful day here today, sunny, and I mean, it's cold, but I'll take it over the snow yesterday. The snow's mostly melted, except on the grass, you know how it does. That did not stick at all right there. I'll probably run a stitch up this anyway, but. Because the uh, guest check was coffee dyed, you know, they're always a little wonky. So yeah, thank you to everyone who participated in this fun little challenge. And um, thank you to everyone who's going on to the second one with me. That is so fun to see a lot of you doing that. And thank you, thank you, because it it's fun. And what a great way to have a whole stack of ephemera that you can use or, you know, whatever the thing was, if you were doing it, if you wanted um, like a whole book of something that you keep or whatever. It was just fun. Okay, now for the ruffle, finally. That's why I didn't put a, a thumb notch up there. I have this lace that's already been ruffled and I believe uh, this is from my mom's stash. My sister gave it to me from her sewing stash <laughs> and I think that's all I've got left. So it's kind of nice to use it on here. I probably shouldn't have put that on there and I should have stitched this. I was going to do that and I totally forgot. Ugh, I'm such a dope. So hopefully I'll be able to get this to stick well. I mean, when I stitch up the side, that'll help keep it on too, but I really wanted to stitch it all the way across. I think it's gonna stick stick pretty good. It feels pretty stuck, so yay. Yeah, my mom was a big uh, sewer. She made our clothes and all that. Unfortunately, she passed away when I was two years old, and so, if you don't know about that. Um, so, I didn't learn to sew, you know what I mean, from her or anything, but I just kinda winged it when I started making journals, and so I can sew a little bit, but not clothes. I don't do any of that. But. Anyhow, so this is going to be my tag. I'm going to put this little girl on at the top. I've done these before. These are the Tim Holtz portrait um, paper dolls. And then this go in there. Her head will stick above just a tiny bit, but I'm not that worried about it. But first, for her, I'm going to take one of my Distress um, crayons and just kind of pink in her cheeks a little bit, very lightly, because I don't like it when it gets too much. Don't want her to look like a clown. Just give her a little bit of rosiness. And you're not probably going to be able to see it on the camera very well at all. 
because it's very minor, but it does it does help a little bit. We could even do this a little bit. And I know if you um, get it wet, that works too. So that's probably what we're gonna do now. The only problem is I think all of my <laughs> water pins have, I don't know, this one's okay. My, um, those distress prans are a little bit old too, so I'm not going to make any promises. But he has loads of colors. I only have the kind of pastel ones. on her arm. My cat is sleeping in the sun in the window. <laughs> He's so funny. We've got all that fur. It doesn't seem to matter with cats. They just want to cook themselves. I don't know. They're crazy little creatures, that's for sure. I mean, this time of year it feels good, but he does it in the summer too. He goes out and lays in the um, garden box when it's like 100 degrees out. Okay, I'm just gonna dab this a bit. I don't want it to be too, too dark. I'm not that great with these crayons, I'm gonna say. It's probably why they don't get used a whole lot. I'm sure there's all sorts of tricks that I don't know, but anyway, I'm going to do some this. That gave her a little color at least. And this is vintage photo. That and Walnut Stain are probably my two favorites. And another thing I usually like to do is cover the back of the paper doll with um, this Manila coloring paper or drawing paper, but for today, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and ink it so that you guys don't have to watch me back it and cut it out and do all that jazz. And I always get my fingerprints. <laughs> So I made a little bow to go in her hair, and I'm going to put it right there. How oh, well that's going to want to stick there, but we're going to try. Oh, 
I don't know if that's going to stay with that. I might have to go back with some uh, tacky glue. Okay, we're going to ink this with pink. Sorry, this is going to be a long one if I keep up at this rate. <laughs> because the next one isn't super duper fast either. The circle one. Nope, that's not going to work, so we're going to have to do tacky glue. It just needs something to hold it a little bit better while it dries. That already is working better. So I've had questions about what glues I use, um, and that is a perfect example. So like for paper to paper, thin paper to paper kind of things, I usually use a uh, glue stick. I mean, every once in a while I might use art glitter glue just because I have it out or whatever. And then um, I want to put a little ruffle around her neck, so I'm going to use the tacky glue again. And then tacky glue is for heavier things or things like this, like where most people would use, um, what do you call that stuff? Fabri-Tac. I don't like Fabri-Tac, so um, I don't use it, but you can definitely use that too. Um, so I use tacky glue in place of Fabri-Tac. And then... Sorry, I'm concentrating. For pretty much everything else, like paper dolls, anything that's a little heavier, I use art glitter glue. Or if you want just a fine um, line, you know, then the art glitter glue is good for that. This is not gonna wanna do this, is it? I have to run a stitch on that too. The problem is getting it to stay. Just making basically a ruffle or pleat or whatever. We're definitely going to have to use one of those erasers on here because <laughs> I'm just making a mess. Oh, come on, you. I just want it to go around so that it looks like her collar and not just some weird flat piece of lace. Yeah, art glitter glue is pretty much great for everything, but I've noticed that these kind of things with fabric aren't great with, with it. All right, I'm gonna go run a stitch on this. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I got it stitched around her neck, not a perfect ruffle by any stretch of the imagination, but it's on there. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I want to do is um, hook her to the top of this, and this will probably have to get stitched again too, but I just had to get that ruffle stitched or I wasn't going to be able to do anything because it would just kept popping, popping off. And I'll put some lace across there probably too. Ah, if I don't mess it up first. Oh my gosh, my fingers are so... Dirty. Hold on just a second here. It's the only problem with some of these jobs, it's fine if your fingers are sticky and inky, but other ones it's not. So I'm just gonna get those cleaned up a little bit. Should have done that, but didn't. <laughs> Having one of those days, guys. All right. And 
And then this is going to get snipped so that it's even. Will this one fit on there? Or is it too short? Oh, it would work. And like I said, I will stitch across there too, so which is the front and back back. Okay. I think this is probably supposed to go the other direction, but I like it when the flowers hang down, so this is just the way I usually use it, but it might be upside down, I don't know. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> if I preferred it upside down, that wouldn't seem strange to me at all. <laughs> okay, let's get this. Alright, and then I'm going to take this washi postage stamp. Oh, let's ink around that too. I feel kind of like I need a rose or something rather than this particular flower. But I don't know if I have one in the washi. a lady. <laughs> no, I don't. So we'll use this one. Need. Needs to be darker. That pink just was too light. I know there's tricks to this, but why? Why do they have to make it so hard? It needs to be like, do you guys remember the stickers and stuff that had the, um, like the crease down the middle and you could just fold it and peel off the sides? Why don't they make these like that? I mean, honestly. It's like the thinnest stuff in the whole wide world. And you can't get a hold of it. I left my glue open too long. You don't have to do that. But um, washi isn't always known for its sticking power. And I want it to stay there. And this is just a stamped piece of avocado dyed paper. Tim Holtz stamp. I'm going to use a little bit of this. It reminds me of, um, the Victorian German scrap pieces when I add these pieces of doily and stuff the old ones are old scrapbooks vintage Victorian scrapbooks Okay. So now we have 
that pretty much done, I think. Looks good. And we have the word ruffle. We have a ruffle. We have a ruffle, sort of. <laughs> no judgment on the, the ruffle job there. Is that as deep as that's going to go? Oh, I thought she was down in there further. I might have to cut a tiny bit off of this bottom part. Because I thought it was going to go. But, you know, then you glue it and ta-da, it's smaller. Durr. Hopefully that's straight. Sorry, clanging around and banging around. I mean, it's not going to be a ton, but... Ah. Hopefully, yeah, that looks a little bit better. She just looked weird like she was way too tall for that. That all needs to dry. So there is ruffle. And now we're going to do circle. And if you're bored, you can um, fast forward. <laughs> I understand. Okay, circle. We have circles that I cut with my circle cutter and then this is avocado dyed paper again i'm going to go around this with a little bit of the brown since it's already pink this was just to give me a little background like i did with the other one Luckily, I already did or had a few little tags to use in this one. gonna put this larger circle down here but we're gonna try to decide what I want to ink with I think we'll use the pink again and this is just another one of those collage pages on the manila drawing paper this is an image out of one of those Sears and Roebuck the old well it's not even an old one really it's from the 60s but um, it's based on the vintage ones so I'm gonna put that about there I think and then this Tim Holtz piece is gonna go around the bottom. It's gonna make a pocket and we're gonna tuck a couple of tags in there. So actually this one should go pretty fast. I didn't think I was gonna have enough time, like um, take enough time. Like I thought it would be really fast, but then I got sidetracked. Wow, I did a really bad job gluing that. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do is go kind of around the side and around the bottom for the glue. And leave, you know, quite a bit open still. This is just um, Tim Holtz. He has that set of ephemera. I can't remember what it's called, but it's just flowers and butterflies and things like that. It's in that set. 
and they're a little bit thicker chipboard stuff. Okay. I didn't ink this one, I inked the other one. That's Tim Holtz wallpaper piece. And this is Medieval Mirage again. I'm just going to pop those in there like that. And then our rose is also going to get popped into the pocket and can be used in a journal somewhere. It's serving multi-use. It's serving as decoration in the pocket or it can be used out of the pocket. <laughs> So these can kind of spread apart and see, then you got that. We're going to take this one. And this is also just a piece from collage that I cut in a circle. This one I'm going to glue all the way down up here as a decoration. So we definitely got our circles in. Oops, I just blobbed glue on there. Looked up a little bit. I'm wondering if I want one more. I have another one if I can find it. Pass it in there. I didn't think those pockets or those uh, tags would go so far down in the pocket. I think I will. I know we're kind of rosed out, but it's very, it's very romantic. How's that? Something different, a circle pocket. And I don't know what size circle that is because it's a, uh, oh, what do you call that thing? Creative Memories. I don't know if it says. It's this larger one, but I used the green cutter to cut it. So I don't know what size that is. But anyway, if you have a punch about the width of your guest check or whatever the bottom of a cup, whatever you want to use. I like how those turned out. I think they're cool. Something different. Okay, so ruffle for 49 with our little ruffle across there and circle with our circles. And these can come out and go in. All right, okay, guys. So before I go, I know I probably just said goodbye, but I just wanted to do a flip through of all 50 of the guest checks. If you don't want to stay for that, um, don't worry about it. But I thought it might be fun for those who do. So that's what we're going to do. Just to just to have a little remembrance. So number one was red. And number two here was um, paint. So there's red and paint. Can you guys see? Okay. Let me scoot these down. And we'll try to just stack them on top of each other like that. Okay, one, two, red. Three was blue, so we did a little pocket there. And um, orange was four. And then five and six, we have five was fabric, which we did the little fabric in the ladies. And six was pocket, and so I put a little pocket right here. I mean, I put a pocket on a lot of them, but... Um, let me see, we have lace for seven, which was this pretty lady with her, all her lace. 
and then vellum was or tracing paper or whatever was the next one this one i didn't do super great with because it's hard to see through this particular design but that is a piece of vellum there and then we have 11 was packing paper or masking paper and i did the all different kinds with um, the mushroom to make the mushroom and like this is packing paper and then crimped paper was number 12 so that's this paper was crimped back here and so is some of this on here and then number 13 was thread so i have thread all kinds of threads hanging out there and then 14 was corrugated cardboard which is back here okay and then we had 15 was sticker so i used the funny little squirrel and 16 was square so we used some squares to make um doesn't this one flip open or something yeah it does behind his head there so there's squares and these are tags in the little uh, square pockets there and that just tucks behind his head. All right, and nine was black. And we had the witches. And then 10 was the use of an index card. So I have the index card as a pocket and I used the piece that I cut off as a little tag. And then we had 17 was napkin. And I used, uh, if I can get the paper clip off. Then a uh, decoupage napkin back here, the Christmas napkin. And the snowman is a pocket. And then washi was number 18. And this is, or no, that's not washi. He's washi, this is washi, these are washi. This is the only piece of paper. All right, and then 19 was pink. So I have the um, Edith Holden pink and then the little girl. Uh, with lots of pink there. And 20 was a woman, so 20 woman. My, one of my funny little art dolls I love. Dictionary page was 21. I used dictionary page, all different colors of dictionary page back there. Uh, book page was 22. So weird the way some of these worked out as far as what I drew. But anyway, there's a little pocket here with a flip that um, has also a book page tag in there. All right, we have paint spatters for 23, or splatters, however you want to say it. So I splattered paint all over the front of that and on the guest check here. So that's that one. Butterfly was 24. She's got the nice little butterfly wings. All right, uh, 25 was wax. Uh, those paper clips are getting me. So I did a wax um, covered paper, melted it on there, and then there's also a wax seal here. So this was a piece of scrapbook paper that has wax all over it, and it becomes like transparency paper or something when you do that. Magazine image was 26. I have this little flip and then there's also a pocket back there but this was the magazine image 27 was doily so we have our little uh, doily pockets here if I can get this apart so those are doilies some of my doilies from my shop and then there's a little angel and a pocket there and also there's doily in the background too all right, and then um, the 28 was torn paper strips. So I have all these strips of paper that I used to make the body of this angel. 29 was rubber stamp. So I stamped um, the pine boughs and the little circles. Those are all stamped as a little belly band kind of Christmas tree there. And then ink was 30. So I used inks to color this and obviously inks to stamp with. So that one tucks in there. So we have rubber stamp ink. 31 was child. And that's where I did this little cutie that got me started on the whole um, 
kiddos digital that I made <laughs> and then ribbon is 32 with that little cute baby in there okay with the ribbon hole protectors was 33 so I used colorful hole protectors and did a whole school theme there 34 was number so I chose a 35 and made a, a little pocket here with these were my trifold cards for Christmas, the houses and the trees, but I cut them apart to make that. All right, 35 was yellow, and I found this crazy yellow image, <laughs> vintage image, <laughs> and did a yellow flower and a yellow butterfly, lots of yellow, yellow. Okay, and then um, 36 was envelope window. So we have our envelope window here with our lady in there. And then this tag comes out of this pocket back here. Okay. Flower was 37. So I have a flower, 38. And that has, does that have a pocket? No, that's just a collage. Okay, 38 was a form and I used this form and then there's a little tuck pocket here too. And a tag in there too. So that's a fun one. But you know, you forget. <laughs> 39 was punch of any type. So I used a circle and made ornaments out of um, drop paper or um, just painty paper. And then brown was 40. So we have our brown Santa there. Uh, 41 was burlap. Uh, sorry. Brown burlap pocket there. Or <laughs> not, doesn't have to be brown burlap, it's just burlap. <laughs> and then 42 was doodle. My silly little doodle girl. And stamp was 43. And by that, I used a uh, postage stamp. So I have one there, and then there's another postage, st postage stamp there, and you can write here. Okay, and 44 was mark making, and I just did all the um, designs. I never did put anything in that pocket, but lots of mark making there. 45 was retro, so we have our very retro sewing pattern lady there with some retro-y papers. And then something retro, and then man was 46. My crazy little <laughs> winged man there. <laughs> 47 was watercolor, so there's the, what started the whole gnome thing. I had thought about it before Christmas, but I just never got anything accomplished. 48 was bird. And then 49, ruffle, and I did go ahead and stitch around this and um, the tag as well, the bottom part, and I stitched her bow on too. And then 50 is circle. So we have our circle, circles. And I did do a stitch here and a stitch here just to, just to help hold that all together. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the 50 stack challenge. I really hope that you guys will join the 50, the hashtag 50 stack challenge too, um, because it is super fun. It's basically the same thing. If you wanted to use guest checks again, you could totally do that. But um, I just left it open for you guys to make whatever kind of ephemera you want to make. And then we're doing opposite opposites which I think is fun um, too just something different so anyway hope you will join and I will chat with you again tomorrow talk to you guys later love you bye